although by now you have already experienced that typing in some code and saving it and uploading it to your website and maybe even uh, checking it out in WAMP, uh, I'm going to show you a different, maybe faster way of doing it that doesn't require as many resources as what uh, we've used so far. In future assignments, we will be going back to WAMP and uh, using that platform to uh, code and upload to our website. Uh, but since right now we're just getting familiar with the PHP environment, I'm going to show you how to access your website directly from your control panel and uh, be able to use the built-in editor and uh, test the, uh, the site fairly quickly so that uh, we can move forward and uh, get the uh, basics out of the way before we get uh, more involved in uh, programming. Uh, for example, let me start by uh, going into the assignments. Yours may uh, be called something different. Uh, I'm working off the uh, spring 2018 uh, week one assignment. Well, that was WAMP and uh, one basic PHP script we did. In week two, we'll be working with uh, variables and operators. So let me do, because it's really very simple code, it's going to be the uh, variables. What's going to be for assignment 2.1 uh, and the assignment you'll see type in code from page 31 so 31 uh, has an introduction to variables uh, and there's maybe five lines of code that i ask you to uh, type in and then uh, save it as this file 02 variables 1.php in the end i'd like for you to send me this uh, as maybe as part of a big zip file or if you want to upload them individually uh, but definitely it's a lot better if you uh, publish them to the uh, website that was assigned to you and uh, test it out that way. Uh, also in WAMP you can do that, uh, but like I said we'll be dealing more with WAMP in later chapters. Right now to catch up, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up a new tab and uh, currently my website has lots of stuff for different classes. It's frodriguez.weareidt.com. Yours will be your username dot .com as well and then in, in order to get uh, into the control panel right after the um, the site address the URL I'll type in a slash and finish up with C panel that's control panel basically C P A N E L I'll press return or enter and uh, it will connect and I will use the same information that I use to use my FTP F Rodriguez and uh, to type in my password. And log in. Once you log in, you're going to see lots of options that you have in the control panel. Uh, you could create a database, which we will later at some point. Uh, you can uh, fi manage your files, you can do lots of things. Uh, you can also have uh, FTP connections, etc. What interests me here right now actually is the very first thing that we can do, which is the file manager. This is very similar to uh, what you will see in your Windows environment or even your Mac environment. It's basically just your files out there. Uh, the way that websites work, everything is basically put in into its individual uh, folders. Uh, this is a Unix or Linux rather based system that we're using so we're going to see lots of uh, folders that have to do with uh, different Linux options. The one that we are interested in is the public HTML. This is where we would publish our index page and where we would uh, put in scripts etc. Inside of public HTML I have uh, some uh, material that I use in other classes uh, and that's okay they can all live together. Uh, if at any point you need more space, if you get an error email to you that uh, says that you're running out of space in your WeAreIDT account, please let me know so I can expand it. I'm going to then create a new file. I'm talking to the PHP class now or maybe the uh, INU 2434, the Advanced Web Programming course. You'll do the same. Uh, once we get into JavaScript, uh, you'll get another directory for that. But for starters, let's uh, get a PHP directory going. I'm going to click on the plus folder icon, 
that will create a new folder in the uh, environment that I'm in right now. Currently, I am in my public HTML. I'm basically in the root of the site, and I'm going to tell it that I want a folder called PHP that will be created in public HTML. I'll click on Create New Folder. Uh, I see the rest of my materials here, but now I have a PHP. This is where I will double click. I'm inside of the directory. And uh, for that first variables code that you see on page uh, 31 of the PHP book, I'm going to uh, tell it to create a new file, just like I did with the folder. And the uh, assignment, if I recall correctly, which I don't really, it uh, says that we're going to be creating two files. The first one will be 02 underscore variables 1.php. So I can copy that if I want. Right click, copy. Go back to the control panel, or you can just type it in 02 underscore variables 1.php inside the folder public HTML, which contains the PHP, which is where we're at right now. And so I create a new file, and now I have the file created variables 1.php, and it's blank, it's got no bytes, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't have anything. So if I want to edit this as I would in a Sublime or in Notepad++ or in any kind of text editor, I need to select it first, just click once. It's blue, so it's selected. And one of the very uh, cool tools that we can use here is that we can then go into a code editor. And that tells us, you know, well, once we open it and we save something, it will destroy whatever was in there or will actually generate a file inside of the content. So I will say edit. I'm already working in UTF-8. That's uh, what we use. It's Latin based. Click on that and I get a very simple text editor. And you'll see that you can even count your line codes on the side. I'll, I'll start typing in the first uh, line, which is uh, declare this a PHP file, question mark PHP. Press enter. Go to the next uh, next line and that uh, we're assigning a variable string or dollar sign a is equal to one come to the end of the code line and I'll type in my semicolon I'll do a string B and I, I should say that whenever I say string um, shortening dollar sign I picked up that habit in, in basic I should really just say dollar sign is equal to two and close the semicolon Go to the next line, dollar sign C is variable A string plus dollar sign B. End of line is semicolon. And finally, we have told the, it assigned the variable, or rather the value 1 to the variable A, the value 2 to the uh, va variable B, and then a new variable C will actually be the sum of these two. And we want to see what that is, and we'll tell it to echo uh, to print out the value of C once it's computed. The book will keep on using um, the uh, comments. If you want to type them in, they will help you out later whenever you're uh, checking your code. And basically, this tells us in, throughout the book that uh, this is the result we're looking for. Once we run the script, you should have a one value is one, the next one is two. When you add them together, you'll get a three. Now that I have my simple code typed in, and there will be much longer code later, uh, like I said, you'll be doing it in WAMP, you'll be doing it in uh, as some sort of a text editor, uh, or maybe you'll keep on using this. Uh, you're at your house, I'm in my office. Uh, as long as you get everything into the server, that's great. As long as you can save your files, that's great. So I'll click on Save Changes and success. I can close this editor now and uh, I told you like at, at some point you will be turning this in. If you want to keep a local copy of variables.php or variables1.php you can simply download. It will now put in, this will probably put it in my downloads folder. I'll say show in folder. Here's my variables1.php so I can uh, I can uh, put it in another folder later or you can use FTP to keep everything together actually that's probably your better option once this has been saved I can visit my website 
I'll type in F Rodriguez, etc. slash, and I created a PHP folder. And then my first assignment was uh, variable, or rather 02 underscore variables 1.php. I'll press return, and I see that the value that I was expecting was the number 3. So this runs correctly. If I right click and tell it to uh, show me the page source, you'll notice that you only get the number 3 because PHP is a parsing language. So basically it did all the work on the server side and then just said, well, what the programmer wanted was just to see the number 3. It doesn't show us the steps. So giving me just the, um, the link will only show me this out of the whole page will be the number 3. So although I have already downloaded this file and it's in my downloads folder, it's saved somewhere, your best option truly will be to run FileZilla, which uh, you might have seen when we were using uh, WAMP before. I'm going to click on start here and I'm going to look for FileZilla to open it, invoke it, go to my site, which I have saved, F. Rodriguez Connect. I'll install the new version later. In the meantime, I see that in my local folder, I have uh, the regular folders that already existed. However, in my remote folder, here is PHP. I'm going to click on that, right click, tell it to download, so that in my local environment, I can go and right click and tell it to uh, open up this folder. Uh, will show it to me inside of the Windows environment. If you're in a Mac, uh, it will open it up in the finder. It all works the same, but here's variables1.php. So if I wanted to see it locally just to change it or upload it later, I'll tell it to open it up with a program that's already in my system. I could use either Visual Studio Code or Notepad or Notepad++ or Sublime. There's an extensive list of uh, editors that I've shared with you in previous uh, Announcements. I'll click uh, OK, and I'm going to open this, I guess, with Visual Studio Code. It's coming up, uh, and uh, it shows me my file, variables1.php. I'll close all these other things, and here's my file. If I wanted to make any additions or changes, for example, I'll just put in, you know, this was a change, and uh, save it, and I'll be done. I'll just exit the program. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. The uh, whole purpose of this video was to show you that indeed rather than having to save and check with WAMP, you could uh, bypass that, use the file manager in your control panel, and save a little time and, uh, and get to reading the, uh, the book, uh, doing the, uh, the sample code, and uh, checking your results all at once in the same environment. Basically, everything is going to be in your browser. And uh, when we get to WAMP, we'll do things locally.